Good morning, everyone. My name is Jordan Sagano, and I am the CAD manager at Monash Unapproved Aerial Systems. I'm um, here, here today to talk to you about uh, UAS, what we do, what our goals are, and how the helps us achieve those goals. Um, so, what is Monash Uncrewed Aerial Systems? Uh, Monash UAS designs, builds, and operates uncrewed aircraft for humanitarian purposes, such as the delivering of medical aid, uh, emergency relief, food, or water to remote or hard to access areas. Our goal is to advance the development of UAVs for civilian and emergency response application whilst inspiring and educating the next generation of engineers. Uh, just a quick overview of us we have four sections, areas. Uh, sections, air instructions, avionics, operations, and flight ops, each playing an integral role in what we do. Operations is responsible for overseeing uh, our market logistics, finances, financial events, and of course, manage our relationships with our wonderful sponsors such as Lead Australia, EDC, and ANSYS. Air instructions, my favorite section, uh, is the department responsible for the design and maintenance of our airframes from conceptual design through the sequence of testing, from prototyping and real world testing, all the way through to Construction and maintenance. This section oversees our aircraft through their entire life cycle, of which uh, our use of CAD plays a uh, very important role. <coughs> Avionics, um, if air structures is the body of the plane, these guys are the organs, they bring the plane to life. They're responsible for all of the onboard electrical uh, flight control communication systems, as well as ground based support hardware. And then flight operations is a team responsible for everything <coughs> post construction, uh, including pilot training and planning flight days. Uh, while they're waiting to get their hands on our latest creations, uh, they're out in the field flight testing different components on test platforms, um, and they're also logging in many hours on the flight simulators. So, we are presently working towards uh, the new flying competition, which is taking place in Hamburg this September. In order to be successful in this competition, UAS will have to take off and land vertically, carry a two kilogram payload uh, of supplies 10 kilometers to a search area, perform a 2.5G turn, uh, obtain GPS coordinate locations of five targets within a 12 by 400 meter search area, all within 30 minutes, all whilst maximizing energy efficiency. Um, so the objectives for this competition are quite hefty, uh, and they have required us to design from scratch an entirely new uh, airframe. And so our solution is the Albatross. The Albatross is a fully autonomous powered lift drone, which uh, blends the versatility of a VTOL tricopter with the efficiency of a fixed wing aircraft. Boasts a massive three meter wingspan, uh, optimized propulsion components, and lightweight manufacturing. The Albatross achieves an estimated range of 35.67 kilometers while performing competition tasks. The anticipated weight for this aircraft is 10.6 kilograms, two of which are taken up by the payload, uh, which makes it eight kilograms roughly unladen uh, when not in competition. Um, to put that in perspective, this aircraft is about 1.5 times the size of me and it weighs only 8 kilograms. Uh, that is primarily owed to our use of leading edge composite, uh, composite materials uh, as well as a careful, careful design process. Of which computer aided design has played a huge role. Um, and it's an integral part of what the team does. It enables us to bring the ideas of the team to life and communicate and evaluate our solutions before we begin the costly process of construction. Uh, and Creo Paramount is the tool in which we use to do this. So before we had this very attractive render over here, we had this, and I'm sure many of you have seen that before. Um, you said US applies a very top-down approach to a lot of our modeling, and Creo enables us to do that fantastically. Uh, this blue collection of shapes here is a skeleton model, and it actually remains in our assembly to this day. Um, it acts as a sort of global variable for all the other parts in the assembly, um, which allows us to make new adjustments <coughs> at the source with foreign effects to the rest of the assembly. Um, something which was heavily used during the conceptual design phase in the early days, um, when changes were being made with, with great frequency. Um, so due to the nature of what we're designing in UAS, we're often faced with very complex aerodynamic geometries. Geometries that need to be as small as possible to reduce drag, uh, and yet fit a substantial amount of hardware. A lot of the time we don't quite have the luxury of space, which is why it's particularly valuable to be able to design all of our parts uh, in the context of the main assembly. Features such as publish and copy geometry, as well as immersion inheritance, have particularly played an important role in the design of this latest model. Um, and Creo's robust reference control has allowed us to implement these features uh, with great success. Right, prototyping also plays quite a role at UAS. We laser cut an FDM 
tons of parts. If you um, see us outside, you might have seen that we've got a lot of um, test parts that we've made out of ply. Those will eventually be cut out of carbon fibre, but we um, are able to manufacture those quite quickly, test their fitment, and um, make sure they're all good before we get the more, more expensive materials. Uh, we model all of our parts of UAS parametrically uh, and with iteration lines so that if we do need to change a part, which is often, often the case, um, adjustments can be made with you know, input. Uh, of course, um, with the requirements for this competition to minimise energy consumption, uh, it's meant that our aircraft has to be as light as possible, as aerodynamic as possible, and also be as strong as possible. It still has to perform that 2.5G turn. Um, this is not something we can just build and hope for the best. Uh, the team undertakes significant analysis prior to construction, making heavy use of FEA and CFD enhancers. Uh, fire element analysis allows us to perform uh, mass reduction on structural parts uh, while not sacrificing their strength. Um, and computational fluid dynamics allows us to test the geometries in a simulated environment and analyze the aerodynamic performance just to make sure that our theoretical predictions are up to scratch. Um, and this process is again an iterative one. Hansus has proved an invaluable tool in a diagnostic sense. We could run a simulation of a body, uh, identify where improvements needed to be made, jump back into Creo, make those adjustments, and then run the simulation again. Our use of Ansys alongside Creo allows us to do all these things before we begin construction, saving us money, material, and the ever valuable time. But of course, all of these results mean absolutely nothing unless they're validated in the real world. We're very lucky here at Monash to have access to state-of-the-art facilities, including the 450 kilowatt uh, Monash wind tunnel, which we undertook design validation of the model you see out in Hoya uh, earlier this year. The results of this testing were astonishing. Uh, we actually managed to predict the drag on the aircraft within an error of only 2%, indicating that we were actually using ANSYS correctly. Of course, ANSYS is a very complicated and comprehensive software package and we're only an undergraduate team. With software like ANSYS and Creo fully taking, uh, which take years to fully, truly master, we're fortunate to have a wealth of documentation and tutorials available for both programs through PDC, ANSYS, and of course, Leap Australia. Um, as our aircrafts grow in complexity, so too does our need for a comprehensive and professional CAD. Uh, as we look to explore electrical design, advanced animation rendering, further simulation, um, definitely some of that gen uh, generative design that we've seen earlier today, uh, all of this documentation will, will remain in open. So where to from here? Post-competition, UAS software suite is expanding. We've recently secured licensing for uh, through the university with the help of League Australia um, for windshield. Um, our current cap, uh, Fire management software is hard drive based, which is making it very expensive for our um, members of the team to cut, uh, keep up with the ever growing assembly sizes. So, Windshield will allow us to make all of our models cloud based instead through a system that's already integrated with Korea, which is going to make life so much easier. Um, this brings with it a whole suite of other benefits, which will make our file and version management more robust than ever, supporting our workflow and enhancing our experience in both Korea and Thank you very much for giving me your time and thank you to Leap for supporting us and inviting us to speak. Please do come and chat to us during the break. We love to share what we love to do uh, and enjoy the rest of the day.